Okay guys, welcome back to Sanity Maintenance. Today we're going to be discussing a little bit of your VHF radios. Uh, a lot of people understand how these little buttons work on the distress, but do you actually know how it's set up and how it works as far as once it leaves the radio? What happens? Where does it go? How do they determine where you're really at, even if you don't have a button? That sort of thing. So uh, we're going to get into that and actually talk about that today. And I know how it was originally supposed to be set up uh, in the early part of the 2000s. Because uh, this is uh, something that the United States was actually kind of slow on, believe it or not. This is actually in the European areas and stuff like that. Had long had this system. And the radios were here in the United States, but we didn't have a way of detecting it. So let's talk about that. Hey guys, before we dive into how the button works, how does it work without a button? How would you get saved or, you know, if you were to give out a distress call over the radio, and hey, I'm such and such and I'm going down. Uh, and if you don't give a location, you're pretty well screwed. That's like hunting a needle in the haystack if they don't know where you're at. All they know is that you're in between, uh, say you made a call in the South Carolina area, they know you're between uh, Georgia and North Carolina. That's a big ass search grid and not really knowing, you know, where you're at. So your chances of actually being, you know, picked up would be pretty damn slim back in the day. That unless you had one hell of a damn radio to reach a very long ways. So we'll talk about what, what the next step was where you're not having the distress button, uh, is where we're actually going to be taking, uh, multiple antennas and putting them across the coastline. Now this is what was supposed to have been done and this is how they were going to solve the issue of actually helping them find people. So they actually started putting in antennas up every 30 miles on the coastline. This is what they were doing <clears throat> back in the day. So every antenna 30 miles and they can hear can talk with all these antennas and hear you and you can speak to them very freely with no problems at all. Now the task was is you should be able to take a one watt radio and actually talk to them within 30 miles of the coastline. 30 miles was the limit. You should be able to talk with them 30 miles. That helped out a lot. Helped out a whole lot. The better part about it is is they could actually tell which antennas you were talking to or how far you were between them. So this cut a lot of the coastline down and actually searching around and trying to, to find you. So okay now they know you're between this antenna here and this antenna there. So we have a 30 mile distance here in this area here, especially if you didn't give them a longitude ladder or something like that of your actual location. So that narrowed a lot of that down and helped a whole lot. <clears throat> okay, now they have a pretty good idea of where you're at. A lot of times you hear them call out to on the radio, uh, is there anybody fishing in this location, such and such and such and such? You know, and then you're sitting there listening, you're listening, you're listening, you're listening, and anybody going to pick up? You know, if, if you're one of these people that are in that area, say you're fishing by the jetty or you're fishing at a reef or something like that, and they're calling for that area, hell, answer it up, man, answer it up. Get on the damn radio, answer it up. Then, then they're going to be asking you, can you take and look in this area, or at least ride around and look, see if you can find these people. And you'd be surprised a lot of times they will actually find evidence. A couple of flares, a couple of life vests floating, and that's about it. But, you know, at least they have an idea of where they're at, and sometimes they actually find them. You know, but that's keep that you know in mind if they ever asking you know for you to help or visually check please do it by all means you know that, that that's that's the thing you need to do because it could be you floating around out there you never know one day but uh getting something different okay let's talk about the, the red button now <clears throat> just how does it actually work just having a radio period like this that has built-in GPS it has this feature on it 
a lot of times your radio is actually helping to save a life. And you don't even have a damn clue about it. You know why? <laughs> well, let's explain that then. So once this signal goes out from this radio here, let's just say there's another boat nearby and it has the similar radio, similar setup. Okay, well that signal is going to be sent to his radio, just like it. Any other radio that's around like it that can take this in. And these things are working in the background. Some radios will tell you. I have some. This one will not. I have one back there that will tell you, you know, what's going on in the background. And a lot of times it jumps from radio to radio. All right. Once you depress this button and you push it, that's like that little blue pill when you take it. It's not going to stop. It's going to keep on going and going and going until it gets an answer. And that's how it works. Now, it's been sent from this radio. It's been sending. It's going to keep sending and sending to that other radio and other radios that are nearby. It's going to go to another radio if it's nearby, which works out really great if you're really a long ways off the coast because you can play in jumper. Even though you can't talk that far, it'll damn sure jump from one area to the next radio to the next radio to the next radio. Now, this thing is going to keep sending this message no matter what until it gets a response back, which is really cool. So... It's not stopping, and the other radio it talked to is not going to stop. The other radio it talked to ain't going to stop until it gets a damn confirmation. Hey, it's message received. Then it's going to go back the other way the same way. So, say this was you here, and you push the button, and after about 15 minutes, your ass sunk. Well, guess what? It's still sending that data out no matter what, and it's going to keep sending it back until it finally gets it, which it never has. But if you did say, but that just shows you how this works because it's piggybacking each radio and the radios don't know how to stop because that's the program is set up to do this. A lot of people don't know that. So once they get that, it's really cool. So it may run all the way around the damn globe. Who knows where that message is all going, but somebody's going to get the damn thing, which is the really cool part. So, yeah. If you don't have a radio like this, it's always a really good idea to get ready with built-in GPS on it. And please uh, apply for your MMSI numbers, many other numbers, you know, you got to take with it too. Because it's just really cool how it works and set up. Uh, I would say, I would say, I don't know how satellite conditions are now. Or how they, I know how they used to be. Uh, running e uh stuff like that. You know, back in the day were really tough because, you know, if you did sink your boat and the e went off, uh, it might be an hour to two hours before that damn satellite actually went over and it actually could talk to it. So this setup here is actually a whole lot faster than how it works and uh, how, as far as getting from boat to boat. But you 250 miles offshore, you might be having a tough time on trying to get anything, you know, as far as communication goes. But this is basically how that button set up to work and that's how it works and a lot of people don't know that so I figured I'd make a video on it. If it was helpful, hell give it a thumbs up. If not, hey have a good night.